back. You know, I'm an outdoor girl, and when things were tough for me when I was 13 years old, I would get on my horse and I would ride through the orchards, into the foothills, up to the top of Timpanogos. And there were so many times where I would get to the top of a hill only to see the next mountainscape, and a red-tailed hawk would come in at eye level. To see that the places that I absolutely adored growing up, to see them replaced by strip malls and subdivisions broke my heart. Good afternoon, everyone. I feel like I do a little bit of everything at Utah Open Lands, but mainly what the organization does is works to preserve open spaces so that we ensure that for the next generation of Utahns, we've protected something, we've saved something. The Girl Scouts camp, for example, have been up there since the 1930s. So the generations of girls that had been able to explore the lakes, that had been able to see moose and deer and elk, and really immerse themselves in nature that when you're up on Bonanza Flat, you feel like there's nothing else around. There was always in the forefront of our minds as we were working to protect Bonanza, the what if. What would happen to the Girl Scout camp if it became surrounded? But I feel pretty humbled that I'm basically the conduit that gets to see all the 64,000 acres protected. Bonanza Flat was really, in a lot of ways, the deal that almost didn't happen. I hope that it continues to be this place where girls learn what it means to be comfortable in the great outdoors, because they're the next leaders of conservation. They're the next leaders of wilderness protection. They're the next leaders of dealing with climate change. So I hope that Girl Scouts is around for, what, another hundred years?